All right guys, welcome back. I wanted to do an update today to a previous video where I go through some of the features of Casio's G-Shock GA2100. Uh, in particular, I wanna review the hands and the digital display. And then I also wanted to remove the bracelet and remove the case back and get a look at the innards of this watch, uh, the carbon core guard, which is really the heart of this watch. So let's uh, take a quick look. Alright, so let's be honest here guys, the digital display is tough to read, it is a negative display, uh, so you're going to have trouble indoors reading it. Uh, I'm going to try my best to get it illuminated here in the video, which still is kind of tough. Um, that's probably the big, biggest downside of this watch, honestly, I've been wearing it for, um, I don't know, several weeks now. Uh, and while it is pretty uh, visible out in sunlight indoors, it's, it's almost impossible to read. Uh, but it is still a really cool watch, and I do like the digital display. All right, so from top to bottom, we've got the A, B, C, and D buttons. Uh, the C button scrolls through all the different modes. The B button is the light. And the D button, when you're in time mode, will cycle from day date, right here, to the time. Uh, and you'll always have seconds on the bottom. Uh, if you press the C button once, you get into world time mode. You can scroll through uh, with the D and B buttons uh, to get to different uh, world time zones. Press the C button again and you've got stopwatch mode, uh, which uh, counts up to uh, one one hundredths of a second. What I like about uh, the stopwatch mode here is that it has two split times. So you can start the, the uh, timer with the D button and then you can get your first lap by pressing A. So we'll try to stop it on 10. So that's the first lap. If I press it again, it'll resume. So we're back at 15, 16. I'll stop it again at 20. And then, so that's the first split. And then what you can do is, uh, while it's still counting in the background, you can hit stop. And then press split again. So now it's displaying 20. If we press A again, it'll now display 27, which is the second split time and then pressing it again will reset it. All right, so if I press C again, it'll bring me into timer mode. Right now I have it set for three minutes. So if I press the A button, it'll start count counting down in one second increments. And of course I can stop it and clear it with A. If I hold down A until it uh, flashes set and then beeps, I get into the timer settings where I can change the hours and the minutes. So we can set that to five minutes, for example. Press A to set that, and there you go. You notice that the hands move out of the way when you're setting it, which is nice. All right, pressing C again brings us into alarm mode. Right now I'm on the signal setting, so I can set the hourly chime by pressing A to turn it on or turn it off. And then I can also uh, scroll through the different alarms. Alarm one, alarm two, three, four, five, and signal. If I change modes once more, I get back to the time setting, which again, you can press D to swap between day, date, and time. All right, when you're in time mode, you can hold down A to change the settings of the watch until the flash is set, then you let go, and you'll notice the hands move out of the way, and the day of the week indicator resets to Sunday. Uh, so this is where you can change the, uh, your home city. Right now I'm set for New York, but of course you can scroll through uh, any of the cities here. All right, so if you hold down A again, we'll get back into the settings and it'll move the hands out of the way and then you can use the C button to cycle through. So the first one is daylight savings time on or off. Then we've got 12 or 24 hour mode, seconds, hours, minutes, year, month, date, whether or not you want uh, the tones to sound when you're pressing the buttons. 
the light duration, which is either one second or three seconds. Let's set that to three seconds right now. And then you get to your home city again, and then you can press A to set it. All right, one thing you have to remember about these G-Shocks that don't have multi-band six is that you have to set the daylight savings time on or off for your world time. So if we press C to go into world time, uh, you can press the A button to swap between the time and the city name. So you don't have to sit around and wait for that whole thing to scroll. You can just press A and it'll immediately give you the time. But if you hold down the A button until it beeps, it'll turn daylight savings time off. Or if you hold it down, it'll turn it back on. So you have to remember to do that for each one of your world times. All right, let's get into some of the hand and dial features. So if you hold down B and then C, the hands will get right out of the way. So if it's covering up the digital display, all you have to do is hold down this button, then this button, and it'll either get the hands out of the way or return them to, they were, uh, to where they were. All right, so there may be a, a point where your digital hands get a little out of sync with the actual time. Uh, so right now it's 11.58, 37 seconds. Let's say you want to adjust the hands to match that. All you have to do is hold down the A button. It'll flash set, keep holding until it flashes H set. And then when it flashes sub, you can let go. Uh, if you use the D and B buttons, you can actually reset the complication over on the left that points to the day of the week. So it'll automatically reset that to Sunday. And then if you press the C button, it'll flash zero, zero uh, in the digital display. And then you can actually use the hands, uh, I'm sorry, you can actually use the D or the B button to set the hands exactly towards, uh, towards noon, 12 o'clock. Uh, and then you press A to get out of this mode and it'll automatically adjust the hands and the day of the week dial for you. All right, so let's uh, get rid of the bracelet and take off the case back and see what's inside. Uh, the bracelet has a couple quick release pins there. They are still pretty hard to get though with your, with your fingernails, so I'm just gonna use a little tool to get in there. All right, so we got both of those off. I don't know if you can see there, but that's the quick release right there. All right, so here we have the watch itself. Let's go ahead and get those four screws off the back. And as you can see, the, the carbon core guard is in between the actual case and the case back. You can see it's a slightly different color right there. So let's take off the screws and see what we have inside. All right, so off comes the stainless steel case back. As you can see, we've got the module inside there with a little rubber ring, which we'll quickly take off here. And then we should be able to remove the module just by prying it up a little on the sides. It uh, looks like there's actually an additional silicone pad here to protect against water ingress. There are the two batteries for the module. Let's go ahead and see if we can pop this out. All right, so there's the module itself. 
and you can easily hit these little switches here to get the batteries out. I'm going to leave them in for now. All right, and then here's the case. So you can actually see here the carbon core guard that goes all the way around the module surrounded by the resin of the actual case. So it's actually a pretty deep case. And again, here's the module that fits right inside. So all in all, it's pretty interesting. This is the thinnest G-Shock on the market, thanks to that internal carbon core guard. All right, guys. Well, I hope you like this video. Uh, check back next week. We have a really unique, uh, rare Casio watch I'm going to display. And uh, we'll check you then. If you like the video, leave a like, please, and subscribe. And I appreciate it. Have a good one.